All right, so we've got Kel Brook fighting Diego Chavez. Eddie Hearn has announced it. A lot of people are very critical of this. Even Barry Hearn apparently took to Twitter, who's obviously Eddie Hearn's dad, and he made some cheeky comment about the fight, basically saying that it's high risk, low reward, and that Eddie shouldn't have made it. Here's my take on the fight. First and foremost, Diego Chavez is just as good as Brandon Rios. And that was the guy that Kel Brook was supposed to be fighting. But for whatever reason, the fight didn't take place. And Diego Chavez, go look at his fight against Brandon Rios. Those of you who ain't seen it or those of you who need a recap or a refresher, go watch the fight. Diego Chavez was ahead in that fight when he got disqualified. And what was it, the ninth or 10th round? He was ahead in that fight. He was also very, very competitive and doing very well against Keith Furman before he got stopped. In the early rounds, I thought Diego Chavez was ahead against Keith Furman. In the Tim Bradley fight, he got a draw with Bradley officially. Some people feel like that was really a loss. But nonetheless, he was very competitive with Tim Bradley. That wasn't a one-sided fight by any stretch of the imagination. So no matter what way you look at it, no matter which way you spin it, Diego Chavez is a solid opponent for Kel Brook. He's just as good as Brandon Rios. He fought Rios and he was ahead until he got disqualified in, late in the fight. Now, the issue is, as Barry Hearn kind of alluded to, is the fact that it's low reward, this fight, because Diego Chavez isn't as well known as Brandon Rios. Even though he might be as good, he's not as well known. So the casual fans out there, and the Kelbrook critics are not going to give him any type of praise if he blows Chavez out easily. And they're going to criticize him extremely harshly if Chavez gives him a difficult fight. But again, you have to look at it in context. Did Chavez give Keith Furman a difficult fight? Yes. Did Chavez give Tim Bradley a difficult fight? Yes. Did Chavez give Brandon Rios a difficult fight? Yes, he did. So he gave those three guys very difficult fights. If Kel Brook deals with him easily, you are going to have to give Kel Brook a tremendous amount of praise for it. You're going to have to. If Kel Brook wins, but he has a difficult fight, you can't be overly critical because he gave those three fighters I just mentioned, Bradley, Rios and Furman, difficult fights as well. So those of you who actually know boxing, those of you who have got any type of objectivity will know that this is actually a solid opponent and Kel Brook will do very, very well to deal with this guy in dominant fashion. Very, very well. Because this guy is not the kind of guy that's been dominated before against top opposition. They ain't managed to dominate him. So it's a solid opponent. Are there better opponents out there? Yeah, there are. Obviously, the guys who beat him in Keith Furman would have been a good fight, obviously. Brandon Rios was a disqualification, but I don't know whether people would have preferred that over the Chavez fight. And Tim Bradley definitely would prefer to see Tim Bradley against Kel Brook rather than Kel Brook against Diego Chavez. There's obviously, well, he's already beat Sean Porter. There's the Amir Khan fight, but hey, he's been chasing Khan for so long. Khan don't seem to want to take the fight at this point in time, so there's nothing else he can do about that. And some people are saying that maybe Kel Brook should sign with Al Heyman, and I think I alluded to that in one of my previous videos about Kel Brook. But on reflection, the more I think about it, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe maybe Al Heyman, if, if Kel Brook signed to Al Heyman, maybe he wouldn't be able to get any better fights than he's getting at the moment. Because... Look at who Keith Furman's been fighting in his past couple of fights. He fought Robert Guerrero, who's a name, yes. But a name on his way down and a name who, in my opinion, was never that great a welterweight anyway. I don't think uh, Robert Guerrero is any better than Diego Chavez as a welterweight at all. In fact, I think at this point in time, Chavez is probably a better welterweight than Robert Guerrero. And that's who Keith Furman fought. Then he fought Louis Colazzo. And there's no way that Colazzo is any better than Diego Chavez. In fact, I'm sure Chavez is better than Colazzo. And this is an Al Heyman fighter in Keith Furman. And even look at Sean Porter. Sean Porter fought Paulie Malignaggi after he beat Devon Alexander. And that was a gimme fight. Then obviously he had to fight his mandatory Kel Brook and he lost. 
Then he came back with a win against some uh, journeyman. Then he fought Broner, which was a good fight. So yeah, you know, Sean Porter's had a pretty good run. But if you look at the other, Al, in terms of quality of opposition, but if you look at the other Al Heyman fighters, they're not always fighting the best opposition. When they fight each other, yeah, that's it's good. But when they're not fighting each other and they're just having a random defense of their title or whatever, they're not really fighting great opposition either. Look at Danny Garcia. He just fought Malinaji and that was a shocking matchup. A lot of people felt that Malinaji would beat Garcia or have a competitive fight against Garcia. I never saw it that way. Go back and look at the video I made when that fight was announced. I said, that is a poor fight. It's a cherry pick. Paulie Malinaji is beyond washed up. And I don't think Garcia is going to have any problem with him. And that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, if Kelbrook were to sign with Heyman, maybe, maybe in the long run, they could sort him out with a Keith Furman fight or whatever. But why isn't Keith Furman and Sean Porter fighting each other yet? How come we haven't got Danny Garcia fighting Keith Furman or Sean Porter? I mean, these are all Al Heyman fighters and we haven't yet got them fighting each other. I'm sure they will eventually but the point I'm making is I don't think it would be as instantaneous. If Kelbrook was the same with Al Heyman, I don't think it would be as instantaneous as people think it is in terms of him fighting high-ranked quality opposition. I'm not sure it would be that instantaneous. Just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong and we won't know unless Kelbrook actually signs with him. But for now, we've got the Diego Chavez fight. And like I say, boxing fans who are really objective and understand the game, they know that this is a solid opponent. They know that Diego Chavez is not someone that just comes to lie down. He's not an easy guy to beat. He gives every top, he's given every top opponent he's been in with, every top fighter he's been in with so far, a very, very tough time. So you have to expect him to do the same with Kel Brook. And if Kel Brook manages to make light work of him, hey, enough respect to Kel Brook. Big, big, big credit. So that's all I got to say about the fight. I expect Kel Brook to win definitely, but I'll make a prediction video closer to the actual fight itself. Let me know how you feel in the comment section below. It's Hatman, I'm out.